All right, what's going on, boys and girls? Um, I'm not sure how long this video is going to be. I'm going to try to keep it short. Am I a Linux fanboy is the question. Well, I guess it depends who you ask. Uh, the short answer, I got a few criticisms that, oh, I'm doing a disservice that I make recommendations for Linux and all this other stuff. I make recommendations for a lot of things. Here's the difference. And I'm going to keep this really, really short. Here's the difference. I make recommendations even if my experience tells me that it's a shit product or shit program or shitty experience. Why? Because at the end of the day, I'm not going to limit someone's options because if you limit their options, really you're limiting their knowledge. And if you limit their knowledge, this is a lot about you. I'm going to, I will take a bias out of a recommendation. Example. Surface Pro 2. I love the hardware. Hate the OS on it. This had Windows 8, 1, Windows 10. It's actually running KDE Neon right now. Can't stand Windows on that particular experience because the design language is you're getting bitch slapped across the face with two different UX experiences or user experiences. You got the, the modern slash metro experience on one side. You dig it deep enough with like say your change network adapters and stuff. You get bitch slapped with the error experience still. Even today on Windows 10. <clears throat> Linux has its own set of issues. If you're just doing simple plug and play stuff via USB. Yeah, it's probably pretty easy. If you're looking to do like an actual home studio, I'm not gonna recommend that you use Pulse by default. I'm probably gonna recommend that you use Jack, which I'm gonna tell you is gonna take some work to do. But I'm not gonna simply say that, oh, hey, that's not an option. Because then you're just limiting the options available to people which is dumb because we can't know what the right tool for the job is for that person just based on what we know about that example i used i used to use audacity to no fucking end until somebody recommended that i try ocean audio and you know what i like ocean audio a lot more I wouldn't have used it if they hadn't recommended it. And they didn't sell it like some dirty horror product. They just simply said, oh, if you want something a little newer in design language and design look, try Ocean Audio. That was it. There was, there was no like upsale of it and how great it was. That's the difference. Because I seek knowledge. I want to learn. I want to understand. So if that is my take on it, then why am I going to limit somebody else's drive or potential knowledge by having my own bias and shit thrown in that? Because that's just dumb. So really, at the end of the day, if I am a fanboy. I'm a fanboy of knowledge and giving people options and letting them come to their own fucking conclusions on what they need for the tools and the equipment and the other things that they need to get something done or to entertain them. Because at the end of the day, it's not for me. It's for them. What they are asking of me is for the options. And that, my friends, is what a real person should be doing. So my fanboy, yeah, I'm a fanboy of knowledge. Maybe you should try it sometime. But apparently, you have your head too far up the fruity company's ass. Because 
I can recognize problems. I'll even list some. 32-bit EFI on a 64-bit system by a company so lauded for its design. But they can't design a 64-bit EFI. Sounds like planned obsolescence to me. So, yeah. I can tell you the problems with the shit that I use. I'm willing to deal with those problems. The question is, can you separate your bias out when you are giving options? And honestly, I really don't think you can. So there you guys have it. There's my opinion. There's my take. Because at the end of the day, seek options. By seeking options, you seek knowledge. Don't ever stop looking for knowledge. To steal a line from Das Geek, fill your brains with knowledge.